It's time to speak up and stop being silent. There is power in your testimony. Testimony being in the sense of testifying of what Jesus has done for you, how he saved you or how he healed you, how he delivered you. Or testifying, speaking of um, the the miracles that Jesus did in the Bible, how he saved people, how he delivered people, how he uh, healed people. These also are testimonies. Or testifying, speaking of how um, how Jesus has delivered that person or how Jesus has healed that person or how Jesus has saved that person. These are all testimonies. And there is power in these testimonies that I'm going to share in this video. Sadly, far too many Christians are ignorant of this power and so they remain silent. And by remaining silent, you are allowing the enemy not only to rob you of the benefits of testifying, but he also robs others of the benefits. Others that would have heard the testimony and benefited from the power that is found within the testimonies. So this is what I want to help you understand in this video. The power that is in the testimonies that not a lot of Christians know about. And not a lot, a lot of Christians are living in accordance to. Let's start here. God the Father created everything with his word. He said, let us, let there be light. And there was, let there be water under the firmament. And there was. So God created everything with his word. When he created humans, he spoke again. And he said, let us, this is found in Genesis chapter one, verses 26 through 28. Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them have dominion. And so when God speaks, it creates, it manifests, it materializes what was spoken. And so when God says, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, it means we're now made in the image of God, in his likeness, which means we too have the power. Notice this word power. This is what this whole video is about, the power of the testimony. The power of speaking the testimony. So when God says, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, it means we too now have the power to speak things like God does and they are created. Let us make man in, let us, uh, let there be light and there was, let there be water under the firmament and there was. So we too have this power because we're made in the image of God in this likeness. We too have this power to now speak things into existence, to use the power that is in our tongue to create things. We find this in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. It says both life and death are in the power of the tongue and those who speak it will eat its fruit. So that the Bible is saying that there is power in your tongue to either speak testimonies or blessings or life or the word of God. And this is life. And the Bible says those who speak it will eat its fruit. In other words, those who speak it will experience it. But then there's the other side, the dark side, how the devil wants you to operate. Death, to speak curses, to instead of speaking the testimonies of Jesus, to speak how hard your life is, how God wants to punish you, how this sickness will never leave your body, how this bondage is your portion of cursing people lying uh judging them speaking evil about them condemning them and so on and so forth and the bible says and those who speak it will eat its fruit so when you speak in such a way that's what you will experience that's what will mat what will materialize in your life because god has made us in his image so we have the ability to use our words to create or the opposite which is the opposite of God's ways, which is the devil's ways. And you're using your words in such a way that is bringing evil upon you and bringing evil into the, 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 the world around you. So your tongue can be used for good or for bad. Now bear with me because I'm taking you somewhere. I'm saying all this so you can understand how your testimony has power. That's why I'm taking you right from the beginning. The Bible tells us 
in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. It says, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. So we, the people of God, we overcome the, the evil in this world, the works of darkness. We overcome uh, the, the uh, spiritual attacks that are coming up against us. We overcome the demons. We overcome Satan. Uh, how? By the blood of the Lamb, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. It doesn't end there. It says, and the word of their testimony. The word of their testimony. The enemy is defeated by the blood of Jesus Christ. That we know. So victory is already the Lord's. But when the enemy tries to come to you, he comes illegally to you, trying to put lies in your mind so you can believe them and open the door so he can come in and do those things to you or cause you to speak reviling things, evil things, so those things can happen to you, all right? So the Bible says they overcame by the word of the testimony. So for example, when the enemy tries, as an example now, when the enemy tries to come and put lies in your mind oh you will you will you can't do that you're not good enough your life is not worth living that sickness will always be there and so on and so forth you overcome by the word of the testimony by speaking testifying of what jesus has already done for you by speaking, testifying of what Jesus has done for other people. By speaking, testifying of what Jesus has done in the Bible that we read of. So you overcome by the, <clears throat> by the word of your testimony. The devil can't win you if you're not allowing his lies to come into your mind because you're too busy testifying of Jesus and Jesus did this and Jesus healed this and Jesus... Uh, uh, cast out that demon and Jesus saved this person and Jesus did this for me and Jesus helped me here see you overcome by the word of your of your testimony so if the testimony of Jesus is always at the tip of your tongue that's always what's coming out of you you're not giving chance for the enemy to come in with any of his lies because immediately at the tip of your tongue is a testimony, 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 testimony of Jesus Christ. And that's what it means. And they overcame by the word of their testimony. Your testimony, whether you're speaking to somebody directly or whether you're speaking through a video, or whether you're speaking it to yourself, just testifying of Jesus, or speaking it in the atmosphere. It's building your faith. It's building your faith. It's building your faith. And they overcame by the word of the testimony. You can testify that Jesus healed my mind. So now when you're constantly testifying, Jesus healed my mind, you're, the end, it's difficult for the enemy to come in and put evil thinking in your mind to tell you you're not worthy. You know, your life is not worth living. You can't do that. All these negative thoughts, thoughts of jealousy, thoughts of, you know, or thoughts of um, mental oppression, like a mental disorder, because you're testifying that Jesus healed my mind. Jesus healed my mind. So many people Jesus heals. And the enemy wants to come back and put that same thing upon them again. And it becomes impossible when you're constantly testifying of how Jesus has already healed you in that area of your life. You know, testify that Jesus healed my body. I know people who have been healed by Jesus from arthritis. Um, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, paralysis, um, th thyroid, different things. Jesus healed them. And what the what a lot the mistake a lot of people make is they keep quiet about what Jesus has done. They keep quiet. Not only is it robbing other people's eyes from opening up, ah, oh, so this can happen to me too, and I'm going to get to that. I'm going to give you scripture about that in a little bit. But it's also hindering them. Because you have this testimony, this truth, what Jesus has done for you. You have this truth, you have this testimony. You're not testifying of it. So that testimony is not at the tip of your tongue to say, well, Jesus has healed my body. Well, my body is healed because Jesus healed me. And, and, and take it a step further. Tell people where the anointing is flowing, where you went to the anointed man or woman of God you went to that God is using and you received this healing from Jesus Christ. You know, some people get shy that, oh, I went to this minister and 
I was healed. So they stay quiet or they just give half a testimony. Oh, Jesus healed me just so superficially. And you're, you're, it's almost like blocking the path for other people to say, well, that's where God is moving right now. Go and receive healing. You know, you could, Jesus may, be, may have healed your family. And instead of testifying, 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 Jesus has healed you. Jesus has healed my family. Jesus has united our family. Jesus has done this. And you're speaking the word because that's good news. So in other words, you're speaking the word. The word is alive and active. You're speaking the word over your family that Jesus has already healed. That's acting like that's acting as a protection from the enemy to come in and, and do other things or do the same thing that Jesus has set you free from. But you keep your mouth shut. And not only it's a hindrance to you, but it's also blocking others from hearing the truth. So they can come to the understanding. Oh, so this is possible. So this can happen to me also. You know, don't keep silent. Because you're, they overcame by the word of the testimony. You know, it's not only you that overcomes by the word of the testimony. It's the hearers that also can overcome by the word of the testimony. Revelation 19. I'll give you a scripture to back what I'm saying now. That other people can also be free by your testimony. Or um, a testimony that you're speaking regarding a testimony you heard. You can still speak it and say Jesus healed that person because that's still a testimony of Jesus. I'll give you a scripture to back that up. Revelation 19 verse 10. The testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. What does that mean? The testimony of Jesus. So there's two things here. The testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. So let's take the first part. The testimony of Jesus. So when you testify of Jesus, you testify of what he has done in your life or what he has done in that person's life or all the testimonies that are in the Bible. Start speaking them. The testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. What does that mean? It means when you testify of Jesus, for example, Jesus healed me of anxiety. That is now a spirit of prophecy. So the spirit comes forth from your mouth. Why does the spirit come forth from your mouth? Well, because there's a Bible verse. I can't remember where it is that says the word of God is spirit and life. OK, so coming back. So the word of God is spirit. So when you testify of Jesus, the spirit, the, the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy when you testify of jesus the spirit comes forth from your mouth prophesying to the hearers prophecy is coming to the hearers that jesus is going to heal you too jesus will heal you too jesus will heal you too so if i testify that for example jesus healed me of anxiety that testimony of Jesus is a spirit of a spirit is coming forth from my mouth, prophesying, and prophecy always comes to pass, pass, prophesying, you too will be healed of anxiety. You too will be healed of anxiety. You too will be healed of anxiety. Or well, let's say I'm prophesying, Jesus healed me or somebody of um, heart disease. That's a spirit of prophecy. Prophecy is coming now to the hearers prophesying, you too will be healed. You too will be healed. You too will be healed. So the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. So when you're keeping your testimonies to yourself, not only is it blocking you because um, they overcame by the word of the testimony, not, not only are you hindering yourself from overcoming more things, but you're also blocking that prophecy from reaching the, the, the ears of the hearer. And we see throughout the whole Bible when prophecy is given by God through a vessel. And that is a prophecy because you're speaking the good news. The good news is the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. So that is Jesus coming through you. The Holy Spirit is the only one that exalts Jesus. So when you're exalting Jesus through testimonies, it's the Holy Spirit doing that within you. To testify of Jesus because the Holy Spirit always exalts Jesus. The devil does not exalt Jesus. 
Okay. So when that prophecy, every time we see in the Bible a prophecy, it always comes to pass. So when you testify of Jesus and that spirit of prophecy comes forth and it goes to the hearers, prophecy has come to them that they too will be healed. And prophecies must always come to pass. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So use your tongue because both life and death are in the power of the tongue and those who speak it shall eat its fruit. So when you're speaking testimony, you shall eat its fruit. Use the power in your tongue to testify of the truth. Not only for your benefit, but for the benefit of those who are hearing. Because that truth is Jesus. Jesus says, I am the truth. And the Bible tells us that Jesus is also the word of God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The word became flesh. Jesus is the word of God who was God in the beginning, who is God and who became flesh. So Jesus Christ, who is the word of God and the truth, testify of the truth. When you testify of the truth, you're testifying of Jesus. You're testifying the very word of God. You're testifying what Jesus did. And you can also just testify of the, 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 the miracles Jesus did in the Bible. Just speak them. Just testify of them. It will help you to overcome by the word of the testimony. It doesn't necessarily have to be your testimony. It could be someone you read of on social media. It could be someone you read about in the Bible. You overcome by the word of the testimony. But so do other people. Because a prophecy is going out. A spirit of prophecy is going out from your mouth. Prophesying to them. See, God, God is now using you as a mouthpiece to prophesy to them. That it's coming to you also. Hebrews 4.12 the word of God is alive and active. The word of God is alive. So if I'm speaking just any words, oh, let's go for a coffee, let's go here. This, it, these are words, but they're not alive. In other words, there's no life in them. They, they're not active. They can't move about. But scripture tells us the word of God is alive and active. So when I speak the word of God at you, because it's alive, it must come to you because the word of God is also spirit. So it can move. Uh, this is why Jesus was able to speak the word and heal people from afar. It says, and Jesus, and he, um, he, what was it? He, he spoke the word only and they were healed and they anyway, I'm paraphrasing. So he spoke the word from afar and it reached them all the way down there from wherever, wherever they were and it killed them. Because the word of God is spirit, so it travels. But the word is also alive. So when it comes to you, it starts to bring to life everything that doesn't have life. And it's active. The word is alive and active. So it starts to activate in you. It starts to do a work in you. Hallelujah. It begins to work in your life. It begins to work in the lives of those who are hearing you testify. And that word that you're speaking, it produces in them and in you what God intends. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. John 6, 63. The words that I, this is Jesus. The word, the words that I speak to you are spirit and life. Now, this is what I was looking for earlier. Jesus is saying, the words that I speak to you are spirit and life. So it's not just any words. They're spirit. So they, they, they can move. It's, it, 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 it can come and find you. When Jesus is speaking to you, it, it's, it's coming to you. It's spirit. And this is why he can speak to someone who was not in, the, not in his presence at that moment. And his word would go and he would heal them by his word. So the words travel. So when you're speaking your testimony, the words that you are speaking, because they're coming from the Holy Spirit in you, they are spirit. They go and they bring life. The words is spirit and life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Spirit travels. So the word is spirit. So when you're targeting a specific person, and that's exactly what witches do on the dark side, the opposite. They target specific people with their words. They put word curses, spells with their words. 
that's the dark side. Um, with God, that brings death. This brings life. Okay? So, spirit travels. So, the word is spirit. When you speak it, it travels. So, you can be targeting someone who is suicidal. And they're standing on the edge of a bridge, ready to jump off. And you can speak the word of God and target them. Even if they're on the other side of the world. And target them with the word. It has to be the word of God. Either they're coming from the Bible, it's coming from the Bible directly, or the Holy Spirit is giving it to you that time. Um, and, and somebody's standing on the edge of the bridge ready to jump off, and you speak, you target them, even from afar or in their face. And you target them with the word of God that is spirit, it travels to them. The word is spirit and life, and it brings life to them. And because it's bringing a life to them, it, it will cause them to take a step back and not jump off that bridge and take their own life. Because the word of God will go out and do what the what God has intended it to do. You see, God was speaking, let there be light, and there was. Let there be water under the firmament, and there was. And we have the same power. You could be with someone. I saw this video. There was a sermon happening in church. And someone with a knife went to, this was some years ago. And someone with a knife went to attack the pastor. And then the people of God stood up and started speaking the word of God. And this guy's hand just opened and the knife dropped and he dropped to his knees as well probably in repentance but that's the word of god that is spirit and life that is alive and active it's going there and it brings life to the dead thing so that holding the knife is a dead thing of the enemy so it has to bring life to that it literally causes the hand to open and the knife to drop out this is powerful stuff you see a lot of christians they do not understand the word of god they do not understand the power in the testimony. How tested, tested testimony is alive. It, it moves. It targets people. You need to be given your testimony. Isaiah 55 11 says, The word of God will never come back void. It will always go out and produce what was spoken. So when you speak the word of God, it will never just go out and, and not do anything. It must go out and produce what was spoken. Just as when God said, let there be light, it went out and produced what was spoken. It must be. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. So give your testimonies. Don't be silent. Give your testimonies in the comment box. Give your testimonies to your families. Give your testimonies in the videos. Just give testimonies all the time. My books can be purchased below. Who is God? Uh, worldly life of deception um new age of cults of jesus christ spiritual warfare and this is grace mullings below god bless you